which are combined with uh, for the under this title. Um, I don't have time to go through this, but uh, so the two um, the problems that I'm going to be talking about are the quantization of the thermal hall conductivity at small hall angles, and the second topic is single angle magnetic field resistance and spontaneous symmetry breaking in the magnetic nodal study metal, which was on the uh, program. Uh, so the reason I uh, I added this to uh, the talk is because uh, with all these beautiful science talks, I figured that it would be unfortunate not to talk about our recent uh, results. Uh, but I, I didn't have much time to prepare the first half, uh, so uh, please uh, be nice to me. Uh, okay. Um, so the work, uh, the first part of the work was done with Menching, Gabor, and Leon. And Nike really was the main uh, driver of the project. The second part of the project was done with Leon and experimentalists at MIT, Takahiro and Joe, as well as with uh, John Fung regarding the ab initio calculations. So uh, we've seen this model a number of times in the program, so this is the Kipayev model. Um, but in order to uh, get the, uh, the uh, Ising ion phase, in other words, the it's also called the carbon from spin liquid version of the Kipayev uh, spin liquid. Um, we need to add a high, uh, reversal break information, which is similar to which is the magnetic field. And the characteristics of this phase are that there are Majorana edge modes uh, propagating along the edge, and that there is a uh, bulk, uh, that there is a gap bulk with non nonagated vortices in it. The uh, Majorana edge modes uh, have this. Uh, this uh, Hamiltonian, um, which uh, uh, is just a linear property, just uh, um, with a with a linear dispersion, and one of the um, very important features, especially in terms of uh, uh, finding for sure this phase, that probably making sure that you probe this phase in the experiment is that this parallel edge mode leads to a complex thermal hall conductivity and in fact the current at the edge, uh, uh, the heat current at the edge takes the following form where C here is, um, is the, uh, is the uh, central charge which uh, in the case of uh, the Carl Meyerat edge mode in this uh, phase is just equal to one half. So we saw yesterday in uh, Matsuda's talk uh, that there had been measurements of the zinc trichloride uh, of the thermal hall conductivity. Uh, so uh, by uh, so uh, implementing uh, pushing a heat current through the uh, zinc trichloride in the presence of a magnetic field, in particular with a magnetic field direction such that uh, you get into this uh, Carl, uh, you can get into this uh, Carl phase. And in fact, as a function of magnetic field, the plateau is observed with a value equal to, equal to the quantized value expected uh, by this parallel uh, par uh, par uh, myron But there was a, there's a very important point in this experiment, which is that actually the longitudinal conductivity in this uh, material uh, is much, much larger uh, than the uh, transverse conductivity which was observed. In fact, the hollow angle that is tend to the minus one. So it is a tiny, tiny angle. In other words, the longitudinal conductivity is much, much larger. So the naive interpretation of this result is that while the longitudinal conductivity is purely due to the phonons, which don't a priori uh, 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 have any uh, Hall conductivity, uh, and that the uh, Hall conductivity is purely due to the minus However, um, the uh, for the Carl Meyer and the edge mode, uh, theoretically, uh, it is only quantized, um, the Hall conductivity is only quantized if the temperature is constant, right? if the Meyer and the temperature is constant. And this is not possible here uh, because uh, a thermal gradient is applied, and in fact, the longitudinal conductivity is, is absolutely huge um, uh, in this case. So the angle is tiny, and so the simple interpretation cannot be correct. There needs to be a gradient, uh, which is applied. Um, and uh, in fact, it is in a completely different regime for the, for 
from the complex electrical Hall effect, um, where uh, any time that you have a non-zero uh, hole, uh, any time you have a non-zero longitudinal uh, conductivity, the transverse, the hole, any time you have a non-zero longitudinal conductivity, you don't have a quantized uh, Hall conductivity. The Hall angle essentially uh, is 90 degrees when you are in the uh, in the uh, when you have a quantized uh, um, quantized Hall conductivity. So it is an entirely proper gene. And so the questions which arise um, are. Uh, how can we have a complex kappa xy when kappa xx is much shorter than kappa xy? And given that the leads are coupled to the lattice, uh, in other words, uh, the spin or the phonons, how can we even measure kappa xy in our uh, And finally, given the fermions are coupled to the lattice, because the fermions are strong from the spins and there's always the lattice coupling, how can kappa xy even be quantized? Because you expect that if um, the, uh, there's coupling between the phonons, uh, and the Majoranas, uh, then heat gets transferred to the phonon, and you, could, you shouldn't need to get a, a quantized uh, phonon off of it. So the theoretical formulation of the problem in order to answer these questions is, uh, is as follows. So we ask like, about the coupling between a fermionic parallel edge state and an isotropic bosonic bulk, and the reason why I formulated this is this way is actually the results we get from this parallel Majoranic edge mode from um, a phase can be generalized to other uh, systems with uh, parallel thermodynamics. Uh, so the formulation is that we take two subsystems, one with a Carlara edge mode, which has this uh, uh, thermal uh, current here. Uh, we take a phononic uh, bulk, um, which is just which just has a longitudinal conductivity, so there's absolutely no thermal uh, Hall conductivity and leads up onto the lattice. And we um, assume that there is a, uh, a coupling between the spins, in other words, the fermions here, the Majoranic fermions, and the phonons, which occurs uh, purely uh, at the edge. Um, Uh, 
which actually is just equal to alpha x y quantized. So this value that we're looking after times the applied gradient. And so from the point of view of the measurement, so the measurement was only applied an external temperature, so we didn't know anything which was happening in the system. All we know is that we've applied the temperature gradient, and that if we measure uh, uh, this uh, phonon current, we actually have uh, this alpha x y. And so from the point of view of the measurement, actually uh, the phonons have alpha x y. And the, uh, the effective uh, tensor, kappa, the kappa tensor of the phonons, actually takes this form. So effectively, the system is just like having a lot of phonon conductivity and also a okay, log conductivity, which is one. Um, and so actually, it is quite remarkable uh, because if you uh, think about it, uh, this means that if we didn't have any coupling, uh, between the phonons and the micron, as we wouldn't be measuring any uh, hot conductivity at all. So the quantization that we should observe actually does rely on the coupling between the micron and the phonons. Uh, one can solve uh, for a finite system uh, for a small uh, temperature and a series, so for a small temperature difference in a series expansion, and you get this uh, nice polymer. But you should remember the takeaway message here is that the fact the micron and phonon coupling. Uh, what happens is that the Meyer Lefner coupling induces a transverse temperature gradient on the phonons, so some delta T hall. Um, this induces in turn, uh, this uh, temperature gradient induces in turn a, a, a transverse phonon current, which is due to kappa, the log kappa. And at the edges, the transverse phonon heat current is transferred to the micron. So that's the, uh, that's the, uh, the conservation equation of the. Of the uh, we can do a microscopic calculation to evaluate what this, the size of the coupling is. And what one finds is that this coupling lambda actually is the power, a very high power, t to the sixth of the temperature. And this is due to very stringent uh, phase space constraints uh, on the uh, uh, energy conservation here at the edge. So, uh, what one takes away from this is that actually the effective measure of thermal hot conductivity values to that zero temperature. Which means that actually if the temperature, when, as we lower the temperature, the quantization breaks down. Uh, we can do, uh, look at, at more details. There are different regimes. And if you think about uh, the coupling uh, lambda here, actually you see that if uh, the coupling here is too weak, you end up with a kappa x y, which is much less than the kappa quantized. And if you're the large enough coupling, you need that quantized value. Another thing you can get out of this uh, finite system of calculation is that if you measure uh, too close to the edges, uh, then uh, you also see the breakdown of the quantization. All right, I'll move to the second topic, and I'll try to go uh, a little fast. It is also very surprising uh, in terms of measurement from an entirely different system. So here, uh, one is looking at single regular magnetic resistance in a serial aluminum germanium. Uh, and here we are talking about electrical resistivity. So I know many the resistance means that you are uh, uh, you have a current that goes through the system, and you measure uh, the resistivity as a function of the angle of the magnetic field here in the in plane magnetic field. And this project really started when uh, Joe and Takahito uh, from still at MIT, and they came to me with this absolutely remarkable data, whereas they measured the uh, this resistivity as a function of angle on the plane of the compound, they actually basically saw that to be uh, in low, at low uh, no temperature. And we have realized that the side, the, the width of this peak is less than one degree wide. So it's essentially really uh, a delta function of features. And the crack on holder actually uh, this kind of uh, angular, thin angular unique resistance. This was from to resonate, and it was 15 degrees. So uh, it made uh, very different. So the puzzle here is where does this actually come from? Um, first of all, one needs actually to understand what this material is, the serum and the germanium. And it's actually a compound, which is this form, that has some uh, non-somorphic, has some uh, C4 plus translational symmetry. And 
uh, it has large uh, five D serial compound at the Fermi level, then you actually expect that you have strong opportunity to the magnetic degree of freedom and the swings. Uh, sorry, the magnetic degree of freedom and the other. We also have, it's actually a bad semi-metal, so we have many small, and this is very important rather than a bad character, very small pockets with spin orbit coupling and magnetic uh, um, So, uh, one knows that topological materials, uh, the topological defects in them, often lead to very interesting phenomena. Um, so the main ones, this location, words, etc., uh, lead to a number of signatures, Arcs, helical modes, Carl anomaly, and all this whole effect, but actually here we discover the Carl Nobel effect. So, what is this compound? So, I already mentioned some electronic properties. Uh, experiments uh, actually also show that there is a, it is a magnetic compound, so it is not just the uh, topological character of the Bell fermions that should be important. Uh, it has a magnetic transition at 5 Kelvin. Um, and the magnetic order from neutron scattering does not enlarge the unit itself. Uh, also, one expects, because it's serial three plus moment, uh, that they are uh, Isaac like moments uh, and they have some sort of orbit coupling in the AP um, One also observes several features in the magnetization, but they are actually kind of smooth. Uh, there is in plane a ferromagnetism, out of plane ferromagnetic, and as I said, it's a case condition. Um, one, one should, uh, if, if one summarizes what I just said, we have serum 3 plus uh, ions, uh, effective spin 1, spin half, strong zero-orbit coupling and icing on isotropy, and a mild semi-metal, in other words, it has uh, small for me po small for me pockets, and there is also strong uh, combo coupling. Um, I have to hurry up. Um, but another very important thing which you observed is that this uh, feature should actually, actually uh, define a, a, a phase. So in the phase diagram, temperature versus H, there is actually a well-defined phase where this feature exists. Otherwise, elsewhere in the phase diagram, you don't have to So uh, what happens is it's actually going to be due to symmetry breaking. And if you list all the symmetries in this compound, uh, you see that along this high symmetry direction, where you see these delta function peaks, um, there's one symmetry which is not broken. And all the other symmetries are broken, and the, every other uh, plane also has a broken. So the magnetism of this compound uh, this is an XX Z model uh, with some uh, anisotropy. In any case, you can solve the, uh, the uh, ground state, and in the zero field, what you find is you actually have on the A, uh, you have A and B sublattices, and on the A and B planes, they are anti ferromagnetic field line. In high field, what you should have is that all the spins are aligned along the field, and uh, along the x, x direction, so when the field is applied along the x direction, the symmetry which I just mentioned is preserved. So it's not spontaneously broken. So in the middle, you should have a spin stop transition. And then the symmetry is not broken, you actually expect that you have two domains. If you, the symmetry is explicitly broken, meaning if you tilt away from the, the, this high symmetry direction, then you get a single domain. And so you can uh, actually draw the phase diagram. What you obtain is indeed uh, that uh, one, the, this, this high, uh, this delta function peaks corresponds to the existence of the space here where the two domains uh, exist. Okay. And so the space diagram has these wedges which are infinitely thin and theoretical. The resistivity peak is due to the domains. I don't have time to go through this, but the idea is that what happens on each side, on, is from one domain to the next, um, is that you have the domain wall, and at the domain wall, uh, you should have uh, you should have uh, momentum and uh, energy being conserved uh, so that the electrons at the domain have to belong to the Fermi surfaces on each side of the domain. And these are not the same on the left side or the right side of the domain. And you can do uh, some analysis here. What you obtain is that the peak, the, the, peak, the height of this peak I was mentioning, uh, actually scales as one over uh, the, this uh, overlap of the projection of the Fermi surface. 
What happens is that if you actually had the point Fermi surfaces, you would have infinitely resistive surfaces uh, in the same so uh, I'll just uh, flash uh, this. So we uh, find a striking new effect that's been on recoupling magnetic semi-metals. The sharpest angle of signal that we observe, and what it requires is low block resistance, large domain wall resistance for a larger signal, and it could interact with generally. And
policy right to be investigated recently. Also, the effect is so sharp that you actually have to be extremely well known. I mean, it's less than the it's almost less than the So I think in view of time, uh, we should move on to the next presenter, but let's thank you so so much. So I would uh, like to uh, introduce the next speaker, it's Romain Sibyl, and 